It is good to worship with you today. We continue our weekly collection of groceries for our neighbors from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. We give thanks for the ways in which you have continued to support the mission and ministry of Holy Trinity through your financial gifts as well as your time and talents. This Sunday, we begin worshiping outside at 10 a.m. If you would like to connect with Holy Trinity, please click the link in the About section of this video. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You do not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. There are a lot of things that make us different in this world, but one thing I believe we all have in common is that we all have experienced times when we wonder who we are in this world. There are a variety of different times and circumstances when we experience these questions, of course. Perhaps it has been in the midst of a difficult time in a relationship with a friend, a family member, or a partner. Maybe it's been in the midst of a job or when, in, when you've been in between jobs, sorting out your employment identity, assessing your life as you look at the lives others present on social media, maybe looking back at your life and wondering what you've accomplished, or looking ahead at your life and dreaming about all that is to come next and all that you want your life to become. I suspect there have been other times for you as well. The question comes down to, who are you in this world? This world that is so very diverse with so many experiences and options and opinions. At the heart of the matter, I think the question is grounded in what makes up your identity? Is it your title, your possessions, where you live, your family makeup, your friends, your political affiliation, your career or lack thereof? There have been so many words spent in books, journals, and blogs on this very topic. What is under how you live your life and the decisions you make, the defining characteristics of your life? This question is central in both our reading from Acts and our gospel from John. In Acts, we hear about Peter talking with the Gentiles and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. The Holy Spirit doesn't just come to the chosen, but the Holy Spirit comes to the Gentiles. Notice the identity here of the Gentiles. It is important. A Gentile is a descriptor, an identifier for a group of people. It doesn't so much define who they are, but who they are not. Gentile is used to describe people, all people, who were not Jewish. So the Holy Spirit came to all Gentiles and Jews alike and calls them to be baptized in the name of Jesus. God was calling all of them into a new identity. In John, we're with Jesus and he knows 
Um, all that is about to happen to him. He's with the disciples the night before he's crucified. He knows that the disciples are about to be wandering aimlessly, wondering what is next after his death and after his resurrection. And so Jesus is preparing them for life without his physical presence and direction. And in this preparation, Jesus defines their identity for them. Jesus says, you are my friends. I do not call you servants any longer. You are my friends. I chose you, Jesus says. The Holy Spirit gave a new identity to the people in Acts. Jesus gives a new identity to the disciples, and we too have been given a new identity in the waters of our baptism. Through water and the word, we are made God's own. We are birthed anew, sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Now remember, our identity is what shapes us, how we engage with people, the questions we ask, the things that we value, and how we spend our time. Our identity undergirds what brings joy and what brings frustration. It impacts every aspect of our being. And for many, the identity given by God does not impact their lives. But Jesus calls the disciples and calls us to have our lives reflect this God-given identity. Jesus wants us to claim the identity he gives to us. Now, Jesus knows the disciples have choices and knows that we too have choices about everything we do. See, God knows this. After all, God is the one who gave us free will. And so we have the choice. We have the option of which identity we are going to live out in our lives, which identity we are going to claim. And Jesus encouraged the disciples then and us now to live out our identity as belonging to God, as being friends of Jesus. See, ultimately, our new identity is being loved by Jesus, period. We are loved by Jesus. That will not change. But with that said, Jesus wants our life to reflect his presence and his love so that others would know that their identity is also grounded in Jesus's love as well. Jesus' command for our identity is to love one another as Jesus has loved us. And this love Jesus is talking about is sacrificial love. This isn't kindness. This isn't being nice. This isn't surface love. This is life-giving love. And while it may not cost our physical lives, there is absolutely a cost to this love. This love we are given and asked to claim our identity changes our lives. It rearranges priorities. It listens. It takes a step back in order to allow another to step forward. It puts others first. It recognizes pain and suffering. It is consuming. It requires intent and discipline. It's allowing God to work through you because it cannot be done on your own, but it does demand space and choice for we are free to ignore this love and we are free to choose not to love in this way, but the creator of the universe asks us to. Jesus has given you a new identity. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked by the cross of Christ forever. You have been and continue to be called child of God. Your identity is rooted in the love that Jesus has for you. Now the question becomes, will you claim the identity Jesus has given to you? And will you let your life reflect this identity? Will you love others as you have been loved? May God continue to break down our walls, ease the questions of our minds and hearts, and provide the ability for each of us to claim the identity so that it flows out of our very being. Amen. We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches and equip us to be partners in ministry. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God, the earth praises you, the seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love so that by their song, all creatures of land and sea and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join with them in praise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons, but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit, so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us towards life-changing responses to these needs in our own communities. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving those who shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us 
aside his crown for my soul, for my soul. Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the I will sing, while millions join the theme, I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing God's love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.